So it's true, uh, Saris uh, tried out that first joke about scratching for two and a half hours. Uh, that little smile he still has is uh, remnants of what we did on that aircraft. <laughs> but uh, I've known uh, Saris for many years. I think we've used him as a model. I watch him every day because um, he runs a fantastic show the week that uh, wasn't. It's never on a week that is, but it's normally on some week which is nearly there. So I have complained to him that if you get an appointment, uh, you know, that's the time I can watch it. But if you keep changing your mind about, uh, let's say, the time that's scheduled, I'll never be able to watch it. So anyway, that's just to, firstly, to introduce myself. I work with uh, JWT for about 35 years. Uh, I deserve a medal. Anybody who works in one company for 35 years, it's a tough job. And you've got to see it across many years, and that's how careers are built. So I've worked on many categories. I've worked with so many people. I've known Ravan for many years. Uh, he's always been such a lovely guy, so you can't say no to him. And as much as I'd like to charge him, I can't. <laughs> so the mint part of my company is not doing well. The Harris bit is doing well, and uh, what I do is I offer bespoke services. So it's what a client wants, so they never complain. So it's exactly what you wanted, here's what I'm going to give you. Anyways, to start the, the session really, the, I'm going to speak about staying relevant. And this is not only true for the brands or the categories or what you do in your lives, in your career, but it's about how you yourself should think about being relevant. Now, the, the critical thing is when I gave up JWT and I didn't have that huge organization behind me, the first question which comes to mind, therefore am I irrelevant? Or should I do something about my life so I continue to stay relevant? And, when, you know, and that's something which I've been through. And if you take that thinking to what you do currently, and you think about how relevant you are in your company, with your uh, friends and family circle, and with the businesses which you either steward or you work with or the brands you uh, handle, you always got to think of this word about relevance. If you're not relevant, you actually are irrelevant. So I've worked on Holix, a brand. I worked on Pepsi, Nestle, uh, Heroes Motorcycle, various brands in my career. And in 1982, in 85, in 90, even today, the only question we uh, start any uh, annual plan would be, how do you continue to keep Holix, the brand, relevant? Because delivery forms of, of vitamins or of food have changed. But that, you know, that malt wheat barley continues to drive or thrive in a category or in a, a, a business uh, enterprise and has done so for over 100 years. So the point is always how do you continue to be relevant? So I've taken this thinking to today's context. We are in 2017. Life has changed. Technology continues to disrupt us. Every morning, the way we lived previously has changed. So the, the one question I'd like to ask you, did all of you all, oh, how many people read a newspaper today? So not bad, about maybe 15. For the rest, did you not read or did you get your news from some other uh, you know, uh, channel? Did you get it off your mobile? Did you get it off your, or you're just not interested? So it's just a question, think about it. How did you get your news this morning? If you didn't get it off your newspaper, how did you get it? The second question is for the people who read a newspaper, do you remember anything? There was a lot of advertising today. Do you recall anything? And I can tell you there's normally a blank. Because advertising in the way it was, when there was no clutter and there were not a thousand places uh, to go to, it was the only thing you were seeing. There was some element of recall. And when we grew up, we used to talk about recall and uh, things like that. Today there's no recall. Not one person in a gathering of 250 can recall one ad. Now, somebody's paid for those ads. So just on humanitarian grounds, if I was Cyrus, I would say, at least look at it. Be kind. 
That's our industry. Anyway, that's a joke. Sorry, that is run off anyway. <laughs> so technology continues to drive change, and it, we need to embrace it and adapt to this disruption which is happening in our lives. And the difference between embracing and not embracing is the difference between success and failure. So this has been said in, 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 in by actually many people now. We all live in what is called a hookah world. I've spelled it out. It basically means in a very volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous world. Nothing which was true yesterday is true today. When I started writing this presentation, the figures I put up on the slides had changed this morning. Because something had changed in a, to a large extent, or some new element had come in, and in this kaleidoscope of change, we've got to try and figure out, if this is the new normal, what am I going to do to be able to continue to drive or participate in the change process? Now, I just must clarify, I'm just pulling out, because this is the, actually the first uh, presentation, just to tell you or share with you where all this world is going, and I'm going to try and do it quickly. So we're living in what we call 21st century complexity. It's a online borderless black world. Anything which is being beamed or screened or read or seen anywhere in the world is yours to see as well. There are no barriers any longer. Wherever you are, you're living in the same world as the rest of the world is, truly a flat world. And those ideas which begin or start anywhere in the world is equally available to anybody wherever they may be. You could be on an island, you could be uh, you know, in an airport lobby, you could be at home, but whatever's available in the world is up there for you. And when you look into our category or our businesses we do, if you look at brands, Brands launched anywhere in the world, you get to know, and the demand is generated real time. As it happens, you can order it, you can buy it, it can be delivered. So as against, if you just go back in time, we never had enough, there was always a shortage, there were not enough uh, delivery uh, platforms or mechanisms, there was a very old brick and mortar model, but today it's it went to the, uh, you know, brick to click, and currently I think the world is mostly click. And because of this, if you were in a category, whilst it may be a dream come true, it's obviously a worst nightmare, because tomorrow morning, you can be made irrelevant. You can be displaced. So think about it from that perspective. And the idea is to, to, to get people to understand Anything which was true earlier is no longer going to be true in the future. So I come back to businesses. Businesses need reinvention. You cannot hope that something you've created, this is not the Taj Mahal or the, you know, the pyramids. That was created then. But if you look at today's world, whether it's a hotel or a motorcycle or a service or a brand, if you are not dynamically driven by the changes in the marketplace, right? Then you're halfway to obsolescence or to what you would call a death. And disruption of program market leaders happens so often, and I'll, I'll share with you some famous names in the world who were there then, who were there recently, and are dead now. Because there's somebody always making it cheaper, faster, better, more breakthrough, or making a category totally irrelevant. Remember we had pagers? Gone. We had uh, 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 phones on the table? Gone. And your behavior around that has changed. You never sat next to your telephone and kept staring at it the whole day. And you never picked it up to see in case somebody is calling. And if you never checked, is it working? You would spend an entire day if you have that element today with you. What would you do? You'd stare at it. But that got displaced, obsolete, gone. And that's happened in category after category. Remember we used to have CDs, or DV CDs and DVDs are a thing of the past. CDs are going to be dead because you can online stream it, you know, there's enough pirate sites to get any uh, a movie or music you want, and that's how life is going to be. You can live on the internet free. You don't need money. So why do companies fail? And before I explain why companies fail, 
there's a concept of customer centricity. There's a life cycle. So if you look at the customer life cycle, he's something you need to mind. And he's, there's a life cycle or a life stage to how he operates or engages with you as a brand or a company or a service. And there's a lifetime value. When I work with clients, I used to tell my team, there's a lifetime value in Hero or in GSK. And don't try and get rich quick this month or next month or this year. Think of 25 years. So if a quarter is 25 years, your concept is very different. Because if he's giving you a revenue of $10 million into 25 years, it's a lot of money. But if you say that, I, if you just give me $20 million this year and I never want to see you again, you don't create a business or a sustainable career for yourself or a career for uh, that brand. And that's either way, it's a disengaged or a disenfranchised uh, uh, structure which won't work. And then there's an experience. While they work with you, they're not going to stay with you for two years or 25 years if there's not an experience where they get something out of it. So it's a cycle. So it's all about a life cycle, a value, and an experience, and how do you keep that going. So customer centricity is critical to, su uh, to succeed. Somebody's money you are going to get, or they're going to entrust it to you. Why should they? You've got to be relevant to them at every step. The day you're irrelevant, they will drop you. There is no love which lasts longer than the benefit I get out of this relationship. And the fundamental goal, therefore, as a company to succeed is acquisition of customer. So that's point one. More importantly, now that you've got them, it's like a chef in his uh, restaurant. He's got a customer. Oh my God, now I've got to give him a meal also. No, you've got to retain him. He has to come back. Otherwise, you, you build a business which is going to last as long as the guy is there on that table and then he goes away forever. So think about it from a long term. So as I go into this thought of why do companies fail, and before I come into why companies succeed, I'm just giving you a perspective of if you don't succeed, you are going to fail. There is no, I'll halfway be there or uh, you know, I'll be semi-pregnant. It isn't. Either you're pregnant or you're not. And long-term success requires a continuing customer strategy. You've got to be relevant to that customer across that 25 years or that quarter or 100 years, whatever the, the, the span is which you sort of predefine that this product is worth or valued to this audience for so long and that's how it will work. And the core foundation has to be therefore built on what he gets out of it. It must always sound like music to his ears. If it sounds like music to uh, his ears, you have a customer. If it sounds like a cacophony of uh, uh, bad sounds, you've lost your customer. So just think of it from that. When you sell a brand or a category or a service, it must sound like music. Then you will want to listen to it again. But if it sounds like something you don't like, delete. That's what happens. And the companies need a clear view or an overview of the customer journey. You know, we used to say for Holly from birth till death, and how do you be relevant across that structure? And there are details of it, which, you know, uh, for, there's no time, but I will to explain it to you. So it's a discovery to engagement, to delight, to reference. So first is to discover the category, second is to engage with the category, to delight your customer, and then finally, that he gets so happy, he says, have you tried this new iPhone, or have you tried this new service, or have you tried uh, out of this? And that's the excitement which builds the brand, and that's how the circle continues. And to do that, or to achieve that, you need a pipeline of continuous invention and innovation. Now, invention means I've created a car, or I've created a phone, or a technology, or a service, right? As soon as it's created, day two, somebody else is already cloning you. So what are you going to add to that value, which is the bells and whistles, which that original product didn't have, and that is innovation. How fast can you continue to change it? And there's this relentless drive when you sit and you put on a hat of, 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 of an owner of a company, is to stay ahead of the competition. So across this presentation, view everything with two or three hats. One is for yourself as a career tool. Think of if you were 
thinking of your own career in the long term. Two is, if you work with a category, what are you going to do? That's a business plan. And three, if you are on brands, how will you communicate differently all the time? So I I put it into a continuum. There's a there's a physical touch point, and there's the old uh, I mean which is the old world, and there's a digital world which we're living in. And if you go through the metrics, or let's say the 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 the, the continuum of how brands are formed and created and sustained, there's awareness, there's uh, a consideration, there's purchase, there's service, and there's loyalty. Loyalty so you can get some deep back. And what this does is, this is earned. Earned is where you've not spent money, but what you did got somebody to give you free uh, mileage. And paid for is, you know, I say a fool and his money are soon parted. You can always throw money around a product and get yourself talked about as uh, usual. But it's got to be a mix of earned and paid for. Otherwise, you don't actually defray your cost. So when you go through this, you understand in awareness there is a certain stage. It goes through consideration and what all you can do. And this is the traditional world, radio, TV, print, out of. But if you see across the spectrum, it's become a very small thing. Earlier it was the only thing. It was the 100%. Today it's the 1%. And everything else has gone into a different realm. There's online display, there's search, there's paid content, there's email, there's website, social media. Now social media is earned. You're not paying for it. Uh, third party site, somebody picks you up. And it goes through then the state of direct mail, which is again the physical, you know, you feel a newspaper, you feel a leaflet, and you go back into what we call the, the, the purchase and service category. And that's where you're actually now putting your money down, and that's the customer base. As long as you're, you know, grazing, you know, yeah, you know about it, you know, you're considering it, you're not a customer. The day you come into the green and the blue uh, quadrant, you're a customer. That's the time you've got to latch onto him and make him yours forever. And that's how it works. That's the continuum which you've got to think about. And in that continuum, where all can you impact someone? So, to sum up, why do brands succeed? And that's my point today. One is there's continuing relevance. You have to be relevant. Continuing engagement. You may have created the iPhone, but it's not enough. Finally, there's going to be the, the i10, then there'll be an i100, and they'll have 100 uh, upgrades, and they'll continue to own you. This morning when I got up, somebody said, do you want to know which of your friends came to Nepal and when they came? It took me back to 2010. So I looked at them. That means they're tracking all my friends. They know where they went. And they know I'm in Nepal. I have not gone to Facebook. But somebody knows. And that's the change like. So continuing innovation in this category. Now that they know I'm here, what did they feed me this morning? They said that there are restaurants, there are tours and travels. I have not told anybody I'm not important enough for Facebook to track me or to, to know who my friends are. That's the world you're living in. Now think about that. It's chilling to know that somebody knows what you did last summer and what you did last night. Now, if you did something good, good for you. Is that it? Google knows what you did last night and so does uh, uh, Facebook. So, brands can be uh, built quickly and destroyed as fast. So, you build a brand, it's gone tomorrow. So I'll, I'll just run through quickly some famous brands. Remember Pan Am? Iconic. Many of you may not have heard of Pan Am, but in my generation, we knew Pan Am. You know, it was Pan American Global Airlines, US. Gone. The story of Motorola is the story. In 1920, they started. They were the most successful brand. Then they broke it up into two parts. The first part got bought by Nokia or the half, when they started failing. And the second part got bought by Google when they were inventing or innovating. So that company was broken into two. One was bought by, uh, by Nokia and one was bought by Google. And then when Nokia started failing, what did Google do? Google bought it, uh, sorry, Microsoft bought it. So 
in index, as you see a service or a category, or if you call a company a plug into your main business, it's worthwhile buying and staying ahead. Because when you buy a company, you buy all the capabilities, all the knowledge, all the mining they have, all the data they have. And that was what actually Microsoft did when they bought uh, Nokia. But what did they subsequently do? They killed it. And now, what is Nokia trying to do is trying to come back. So suddenly you now see Blackberry. What happened to Blackberry? It died. They took people from keyboards to a flat screen. The day they did that, and as a consumer, I tried the, the, the touch screen. It just made sense for me to go to a better uh, uh, platform, a more user-friendly platform like say Samsung or Apple, and that's what they all moved. Now they've come back because there's a generation of people who, over the hill, as we say to some of us, <laughs> who like that feel of a touch. I know I've touched it, but that's how it went. Hotmail, bought by Microsoft, killed by Microsoft. Killed by who? By their own product, taken Hotmail, developed it. This is the famous Indian who made uh, uh, about $400 million or whatever. And he's never uh, invented anything after that, and he's never innovated anything other than I think his clothes have got a little flashy. But he made his money and they bought his technology, they bought his data, they understood what he did and today you have uh, uh, a new avatar of the same platform, Outlook. And now if you look at the, the new famous brands, firstly there's, if you look at Mercedes, Audi, BMW, Toyota, all of us know this. <laughs> Along comes this new bright boy, Tesla, Elon Musk. Everybody's heard of him. What is he doing? He's tapping into an insight of people being environment friendly. All of us hate putting petrol in cars, so nothing like thinking that, you know, in the building I live in in, in Bombay, we have a, a charging point. So half the building now gets free uh, gas because they're charging their cars of, uh, you know, let's say common electricity. The other half are still putting petrol or diesel. So Tesla came in with this new platform, which is technology. And the technology is to give you a car which can drive for so long and, uh, yeah, thank you. Which you can drive for 300 kilometers on a charge. So that's how the world has changed. Diesel is gone, petrol is going, and soon you're going to have the Teslas of the world. Now, coming into the three favorites, all of you know, Amazon, Google, and Apple. So I've taken three. I could have taken Facebook. I could have taken many others. But I just thought I'd take these three because these are three challenges are in my mind. Apple was design-led. Even the plug is designed and uh, consumer. I mean, consumer-led and then consumer-centric. It had everything going. But what they didn't do well is they created a fund which they kept outside the U.S. of 100 billion dollars, and that's the money they generated from all these countries. And suddenly the stakeholders said, "We want profit." So they borrowed against that $100 billion. I'm just telling you, companies are not only about brands. They borrowed $100 billion in the US and distributed it in the fund, which is why today they're struggling. Nothing new is coming after this. You're just getting minor upgrades. But you try and change this, you don't even get a form shape. You're not getting major strides because they don't have the money to continue that process of innovation. Two is, if you look at Google, Google, and I'll, I'll talk about Google a little later, Google is actually an advertising platform. They know where you are, they can reach you however they want to. So you're on tap for what they sell through video or through display or whatever. But along comes Amazon. Now Amazon is the story. Amazon started with online books. And today they have such a lineup of products, which I'm going to share a little later, as to how successful they've become just by identifying. And you know, you all need a discerning eye. You must put your finger on this is the product or category which I think is where the market is going. And today, that A to Z in the, in the logo design, that means they deliver everything to a customer from A to Z. And that's their vision, their mission is up there in that logo. But I'll explain where they're from. So I come to my favorite slide about Alice in Wonderland. I cannot make a presentation without somehow putting this out of the uh, Alice in Wonderland, you know the story of uh, Alice in Wonderland, and this is a Lewis Carroll novel actually. It starts with Alex saying, which road do I take? And the cat says, where do you want to go? And Alice says, I don't know. So the cat says, then it doesn't matter. Now you take that thinking to a brand in a business. 
if you don't know where you want to go, firstly, if you don't know where you want to go, put on your personal hat. How does it matter? Now you put it into your company. If the company doesn't know where it wants to go, does it matter? And now you take the brand or the category. If they don't know where they want to go, how does it matter? And now in all this, there is a, a customer or a consumer. And he doesn't know where he wants to go either. So he goes to somebody else who knows. So fundamental to life and anything you do, you need a roadmap or a strategic roadmap. Google Maps can't do it for you. You can do it on a post-it. If you put that down, that becomes your next three years, five years, ten years. So it's about knowing what you want, where you want to go, what you want to do, and set that ambition for the brand and its purpose. If you don't set an ambition that I want to be the world's number one, or I want to be Nepal's number one, or I want to be Kathmandu's number one, or I want to be a market share of 50% or 40% or 30%, if you don't set out some goals or places where you want to go, then you're not in advertising or marketing or branding or in business. Then you may as well get it to poetry. But even there you need to know where you want to go. So there is no shortcut. And this is one of my end points of learning that if you don't know where you want to go, it doesn't matter. Second is, if you're in a category, how well do you know it? Today we have a panel. I hope when you introduce yourself or your question, you tell me which category you're in. And that can be a good discussion or a debate point. Because if you know which category, right, then you must know everything about that category. Everything about that customer. If you're half of course, you have half knowledge, right? You don't get a baby, I can tell you. Now you try and work out that uh, visual, but it doesn't work. You need full knowledge or you don't need the knowledge or change your category. And marketing effectiveness, I was speaking to Bharat this morning, it's firstly a science. First, get the science right. If you don't have the science, the art doesn't matter. After you have the science and you know what you're trying to do, then Think about the art. And when you have that art and science together, and you create your promise, right? Delivering the promise is your only goal. And you cannot be everything to everybody. Start there. So positioning, firstly, is sacrifice. You know, when you know, to be Cyrus for a minute, I can't help but be like him because I've spent two hours that virus has got on Canadian. When you're getting married, the first thing you have to do when you decide who you're going to marry, you have to sacrifice that. You can't marry everyone. <laughs> it's not possible. Same with the brand. If you like certain things of the brand, but only you love it, it's not good enough. As a customer, I'm not going to generalize this marriage. I want to know why I'm going to buy you. It must sound like music. So you must think about positioning as the art of sacrifices. You have to give up something. You can't be everything to everybody all the time. As much as I would like to be to everybody, it's not possible. You can keep some happy, you can't keep everybody happy. And I'm making a distinction between new brands versus established brands. New brands are people who have none of the above. They don't have a legacy, they don't have a vision, they don't have a mission, they don't know what their branding strategy, brand strategy is, then their branding strategy. So which thing, they're a, they're a, let's say, a, a white canvas. They can go anywhere. It's the Alice in Wonderland. Where would you like to go? I'm free. The second is established brands. They have a defined, uh, uh, you know, uh, vision, mission. They know what they want to do. And that's the legacy they have to live up to. So you have to live up to your reputation. It's not about, now I've created my reputation, I can go back to sleep. No. It's about, now that you've got it, oh my God, I've got to continue to keep this reputation. It's like when, you know, when people start putting money in the bank. Now that you've got it, your only job is to protect it. When you didn't have it, it didn't matter. So now when you come to the integrity and the testimony of what you are doing, and therefore the future, so if you're an old brand, and if you have not thought through these uh, issues, you need to. Just so that you protect your company for the quarter. And the quarter I'm defining is 25 years. I'm not defining it as next month, next quarter. I'm looking at a larger quarter, larger perspective. You're now owners of a large brand. You cannot think six months. 
you cannot think for your employees that they'll be with you for six months, then it doesn't matter. No. They're going to be your through a career. They'll buy one house, second house, first child, second child, first marriage, second marriage, third marriage, two living, three living. That's how it's going to be. That's how life will change. Right? So think of it that way. And that's the legacy which you create or you write or think about is what you need to deliver on that. So now we come to advertising. Where is advertising in this? I need audio leverage to pass an idea. I'll just go a little fast so that you know what time I started. And this is the future of marketing communication. So we lived in silos. And then we acquired companies with specialization. And all these silos continue to get built. And no silo talks to another silo, by definition. Right? It's, it's made of steel. So if you're in design or you're in technology or let's say uh, branding or something else or in, uh, you know, you're delivering uh, experience, you're not talking to that. So the client has to put on a combined hat and some days he's got to be the best of design capability, some days he's got to know his uh, algorithm, some days he needs to know this. So this is cast in stone. So legacy companies in the advertising world are dead because of this. They've built these things and you can't break it up. They've built their last another hundred years. The opportunity is for somebody who doesn't have that. What can you do to do? So I've done an RIP on this. The opportunity of traditional advertising agencies as we speak is being written. Traditional, I'm not saying advertising agencies are dead. There will always be a role, but it has to be in a new avatar, in a new way, in a reinvented way. Now I have one uh, uh, movie coming up, right? Sound. The mighty empires have risen and fallen. The Lions, the Romans, and in recent history, this empire. MP SNC Worldwide, an advertising agency, but not just any agency. This was the last advertising agency on earth. At one time, this was a vibrant, thriving organization. But then one day, the people who weren't here disappeared in an instant. Gone. This office has been preserved just as it was found after everyone vanished. We can even see what they were doing when that moment came. Filling in time sheets, getting another coffee, playing football. They were carrying on as they always had, ignorant of a great change going on all around them that would soon destroy them all. And this was it. The consumer to whom agencies have force-fed their brand messages for decades stopped being passive. This was the catastrophe. Because now the consumer could actually choose what they wanted to see, not what the advertising agency forced them to. But still, agencies like this felt invincible. So they ignored these changes and held fast to the things they knew, like this thing. And these things. But most of all, they clung to this, the television commercial, even when clients begged for new, non-traditional ideas. So they simply repurposed their print ads to clever, rich media banners and glibly suggested that everyone have a Twitter feed. In agency after agency, the story was the same, until at last not a single advertising agency was left. So much was lost because of arrogance and ignorance and because they chose to ignore the changes going on all around them. But in the end, the reasons don't matter. What matters is there were people once in this advertising agency, then one day, there weren't. That's the end, or you really, really should change. The point of this is to change, not to accept what's happening. And if you look at all the agencies in the world and you compare it to a Google or a Facebook, those single units are larger than all the agencies. And agencies finally will become go back to being a niche. So I'll, pick, I'll, I'll use him for one part. I'll get that guy, and you're back into that same cycle of death and destruction. It's not going to work. 
And the animals which are going extinct, one is the printer's daughter. We have all read the papers today. Zero impact is made. So what does the newspaper do? They, they have to reinvent. They have to take the content which has been generated onto another platform. And that's what needs to be thought through. And uh, this is actually uh, Darwin, where he said, it's not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent, but the one most responsive to change. And just so you know, I made that up. But it's a point. If I didn't put his face there, he wouldn't believe it. Because then it would have been another slide. So I said, let me give him something which he should have said then. Or can see or not. So I just thought I would put that in. And the digital world we live in is, it's proliferated. There are brands, products, services. The decision making process is very different. Who's scripting the, the engagement process? Who thinks about these things? It's fragmented. Media is all over the place. Digital channels are all over the place. I've got 600 uh, channels to choose from. I'm only watching three. What's happening to the 597 others? Who's supporting them? Who's funding them? Why are they getting a client's money? Why should they exist? You can only watch one program at a time. Your day is only 24 hours. Why should they exist? So each person has an audience has a metric, has a reason to be, and somebody is being convinced that you I need eight percent of your budget or six percent or three percent, and many eight, six, threes become a hundred for them, however small it may be, however niche it goes. And the 21st century uh, solution is actually this. Uh, uh, this is uh, a, a thought I had when I went to Singapore for the Formula One. When that car comes in, there are no silos operating. There's one silo. And if you see all those 18 people around that car, they're all there to do a service. And it turns around in six seconds, seven seconds, five seconds, and they keep trying to uh, you know, beat that time of changing, checking the, changing the tires, checking the pressure, putting the petrol, whatever they do. It's the same size, one team around a brand. So see the car as the brand, skills and capabilities all around, happening real time, content being managed, Everything being managed. And what we've seen so far is just the tip. Because suddenly we've got onto a good thing. Technology is a great thing. Everybody is taking that technology platform and becoming uh, you know, better at it. So what you've seen so far, do you think there's been change? I'm telling you there's no change. The change is going to start from Monday morning. And in every category, I've got two, three slides just to show you how complex it's getting. This is the market you operate in. Category after category after category. How will you differentiate your brand and get a reason for somebody to even consider you when there's so much choice? So let's take motorcycles. If I had to buy a motorcycle, and I think of the color and the price points and the engine capacity, and I think of the, you know, the power delivery and uh, the mileage, and after say, uh, service, how do you choose? It's not a blind decision that there is a Honda and I'm going to buy it. No. You've got to understand, you have to be discerning enough to understand why you're buying what you do. If you talk of laptops, how do you choose today? Go and try and buy a new laptop. Has anybody gone personally with your own money to buy a laptop recently? There are 4,000 different specifications to choose from. How do you choose? It's not a set to this brand trust, yes. I can buy an HP or Dell. Dell is cheap. I can buy an Apple. It's expensive. But why? Do you know why? And that your company gave it to you is not a good enough reason. You must have a reason. So in category after category, it's undifferentiated. A shirt is a shirt is a shirt, but there's a difference in every shirt. Quality of the color, how well they stitch it, how many watches does it last, you know, uh, the brand, brand is important, all of us live on brand. And this is what the consumer sees. They're not aware, they don't know. They need to choose something, they don't know what they're choosing. And my only point is, in a, in, in a, in a sea of sameness, everything being equal, the only dif uh, differentiator is this. There is no other differentiator. 
And what value can you put to that? Why should I buy this? Is the thought. Think Coke, famous. Global and thought. Local and relevant. They're not living with that one bottle design which they've done a hundred years ago. No way. Country after country, they'll do a Diwali pack here, they'll do a Christmas pack in the UK, they'll do a, a Thanksgiving pack in the US. Because customers buy across certain reasons. And so you've got to be dynamic. If a consumer dynamic, festivals are dynamic, please, brands need to be dynamic. And this is the world we live in. I'll just go a little faster, I don't know how much time is left. But uh, there will be 40 billion connected devices by 2020. 40 billion. There are only 7 billion people in the world. Everybody will have 3 or 4 or 5 devices. Remember, when I'm coming to the last 10 minutes, do 10 minutes. Okay? So think about that. 40 billion connected devices. Each guy knows who you are. I know exactly what you're surfing. I know when you're watching a movie. I know everything about you now. By 2020, I'll know your credit card spend. I'll know what you buy, how often, where you spend uh, uh, your money, most of your money. I'll know everything about you. And this, everybody knows. There are social sites. There are social sharing sites. Last year or year before last, this figure used to be a billion people. Right now, it's 1.86 billion, but actually he's crossed 2 billion. So he's already got one third the world on his platform. Already. He can serve you what you want. He can share what you want. He can market it any which way he wants. Video, whatever, whatever. Think about it. And I'm not saying Facebook is a strategy. I'm just telling you the power and the potential of the huge scale and the focus on who you are in 2 billion people is what should worry you or you should see that as the opportunity. How are you going to reach me? How are you going to reach me? I'm all over the place. Again, technology knows what you're doing, when you're doing it, how often you're doing it and why you're doing it. And if you look at digital touch points, each dot is a business. It's an enterprise. And in each dot, there are 50 players. So when you decide, how do you decide where you're going to take your money, spend your money? How are you going to do it? And if, you're, if you are custodians of brands and businesses, you make it your business quickly to at least understand how this is working, why is it happening like as it is. And then if you look at, uh, you know, there's mobile retail, that is everything off your phone. There are marketplaces, there are on-demand services, there are app-based services. And it, it, it keeps becoming larger and larger and larger. And therefore, the relevance which you can ascribe to what you use is when you have the knowledge of your category, your customer, and the platform or the distribution which you so choose. That is knowledge. So, I now come to the new normal. Creativity and ideas are no longer an agency's uh, uh, domain of preserve. Everybody has an idea today. It's open. Ideas can come from anywhere. And I now come to that, actually, it's virtually my last se section of the power of ideas. What's an idea? So, this is a shot or an image of the Tipta. Somebody's dream or an idea was to create a city and this is actually I'm leading up to Dubai. It's become the next global luxury hub, but how did it become that? They had no oil. They don't have oil. He started by saying, I will create a financial hub. Then they created a tourism hub. Then they created an entertainment hub. Then they created a luxury hub. Then they created anything you can think of which gives people pleasure, whether it's scuba diving, whether it's underwater homes, hotels underwater, they've thought of everything. They never had anything. They only had sand. 
They didn't have mountains. They didn't have the address. They didn't have oil. Dubai I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the, uh, the cousins around them who have everything. I'm talking about Dubai. They created this from nothing. So an idea can be a country idea, a city idea. It doesn't have to be an advertising idea. I worked on uh, South African tourism. We said on these coordinates, before GPS had been formed, or had created, on these coordinates, the experience you see on this ad is the experience you'll get if you go to this coordinate. I'm talking about 2002, 2003, when we were consulting uh, with, uh, with uh, South African tourism. <coughs> so I'm, I'm reminded that the GPS then, and what we today, today you know exactly where it goes because everything is a GPS. When you have to go to somebody's house for dinner, what do you say? I say, send me a WhatsApp locator. Simple. It comes to my phone, it takes me there. Because it's detailed, pointed. And that's Dubai today. Who would have thought? Can't find it with that image of a dead book. That's an idea. Relentless, changing, innovating, everyday, relevant. You know, they say never buy uh, houses on sand. Everybody's buying houses on sand. How are they doing it? And then I say digital is not a strategy. Neither is Facebook, neither is Twitter. It's not a strategy. Just because I'm using digital is not a strategy. So it's about mass customization. Ma mass customization actually is, a, is an oxymoron. You can't be customized and mass. But you've got to find the larger audience which has a, a, a central or a driven purpose, you know, which is contained, which you can uh, design on. So, idea at the core to all we do, I'm running one film three ways. Sound. Money can change everything.
Then the tonality has changed. If you notice, the music has changed, the way he speaks, money is good. And then the last one where the final brand is re uh, revealed, he's used the tonality of both. And that's the versatility of advertising. Where he said m money is neither good nor bad, it's what you do with it. So there's a subtlety in how the creator's expression of was, or the, the idea was articulated. But that's the versatility of the platform called advertising. You can do so much with it and be as imaginative or as creative as you'd like to be. So while I'm saying advertising is dead, I'm saying it's very alive, it's what you do with it. So advertising is bad and advertising is good. But advertising is good if you use it for well. So I'm saying long live, or the king is dead, long live the king is up. Phrase, you know, there's a new king in town. So you've got to see the subtlety of taking the platform and making it new again. And the world is complex, so you've got to keep it simple. One hour. Set fire to your hair, poke a stick at a grizzly bear. Eat medicines that's out of date, use your private parts as piranha bait. Continue to 
you know, upgrade, upgrade, but it's not taking them anywhere else. And somebody once said, in fact, a uh, Google employee, he says, no one wants to face the reality that this is an advertising company with a bunch of hobbies. They say it's not a cutthroat company, though it's one of the largest companies in the world. So they're putting a certain value to its demise. And which is the one which is getting it? Amazon. Amazon is cracking it category after category after category and continuously. Because they have no shareholder meetings, they don't care about stakeholders, this one man is doing it. So, it says the true future of a company is in a customer-centric approach. He only thinks of the customer. There is only one valid purpose of a firm to create a customer. And Amazon is showing the way with a series of market creative innovations. Instead of living off and improving its existing businesses, it is systematically creating new businesses that are more important than its original business. Book online bookstore to where they are from. And this is it today. World's largest online bookseller, A to Z of everything. I've added the E everything. Kindle, the book, the electronic book. Alexa, at home I have an Alexa. It's the Echo actually. Alexa, give me an update. What's Trump doing right now? President Trump is doing this, 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 this. Alexa, can you get me an Uber? Alexa, what do you think are the best restaurants next to me? Alexa tells me everything. And you can be silly with Alexa. You know, Alexa, you're a XYZ. And Alexa will say, I'm sorry, I don't understand you. So it's like Siri, but it's an evolved version. But the best is the music. Alexa, play me station 9432 in New York. It starts playing. Play me and on my phone, I search. You know, what do I want to listen to? It's playing. That's artificial intelligence. Where did it come from? Amazon. The fire stick connected to your TV, anything you want to see is being directed. Prime movies. So what have they not done? And what have they gone into now? Now you don't like your laptop, so they've gone into the C2C uh, 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 space. I don't like something, I can sell it to somebody else. eBay space. So slowly this juggernaut is going across your entire life. So when you want to buy something, where do you go? You go to Amazon. You look at Amazon the site and say, I want to buy something, it's there. So over time, you don't need Google. Google will tell you where all you can buy it from. Amazon will tell you what you can buy, how much you can buy, what price point, what the comparative is. They'll say, why are you buying this? Amazon saying other people also view this. It you know, puts up a, a series of files. Buy an airline ticket. So that's the world. That's the world. That's the world you live in. Customer-centric approach. Shareholder value is the result, not the goal. You don't come into a company and say you want to make money. You want to make something that somebody will buy and give some money for. And the metrics, finding the metrics. You cannot say I want to make a lot of money. How much do you want to make? For what end? To what purpose? How much money do you have for R&D? How will you deliver? And right now, they own retail, cloud computing, movie production, world package hardware. They come out with 400, half a billion dollars. In India, they've already invested, I think, 5 billion dollars. 5 billion dollars. I don't think India has put 5 billion dollars in rent. Other than Air India. <laughs> and there's nothing to show. I mean, it's a fantastic company. So your first purpose now, forget everything else is staying alive. Irrelevance and obsolescence is around the corner. And short-term wins, you need them, are fundamental to a long-term. Now take the fastest man on earth, Bolt. What happened to him? Somebody else came. It's around the corner. Gatlin came in, right? He beat him on his last race. Now everybody only knows Gatlin. Hussein Bolt, you knew he was the, the fastest man in the earth, but the fast, in 10 seconds his life changed. There is a finishing line, and yet there is no finishing line. Now you deal with that. And as soon as you cross the finishing line, there is the next finishing line which is in front of you. I'll just briefly talk about the app world. Just think about it, somebody sitting nowhere creates a little app 
called Uber. Seventy billion dollar. Please tell me what is the GDP of uh, uh, Nepal? Does anybody know? Hmm? Twenty-one billion. One app. He doesn't own a car. He doesn't own a driver. He doesn't own his house. He doesn't own probably his phone and borrowed. One app. Seventy billion dollars. One man. This is the app world. So if you can think of something, right? If you can think of it, to achieve it or deliver it is not so difficult. First, think of it. It starts there. Take these guys, Uber, Airbnb, and Expedia. No hotels, no rooms, no aircraft. A generic hotel. They don't even use the word brand. Generic. So they have taken the concept of brands and made it mud. Because on their platform you can buy all the brands, it's a marketplace. So it's unbranded and it's branded. Once you're in it, I want to book a hotel in Johannesburg. I'm in it now. I see all the brands. I choose the marketplace. I'm in it and I buy. But what does Airbnb have? Your house, your hotel, your aircraft. And they've created $80 billion, $200 billion. Amazon founder today is worth $200 billion or something like that. He doesn't have time because nobody has enough time to spend $200. So he's gone all over. But I don't mind going over about myself while it lasts. Think about it. So we come to finally the imagery as a differentiator, bring the brand promise alive, content, you you'll always want content, be bold, be brave, think spectacular, don't think mundane. Think spectacular, it must scare you first. And finally when you've thought the idea, got the idea, and you think of how you're going to articulate it, express it, you have to be true to the craft of advertising. I'm going to run commercial. I've had my ups and downs, my fair share of bumpy roads and heavy winds. That's what made me what I am today. Now I stand here before you. What you see is a body crafted to perfection, a pair of legs engineered to defy the laws of physics and a mindset to master the most epic of splits. So had a, and 
so gracious as the time. So I broke to you there. <laughs>
this is what is happening in the world. Now in this lies an opportunity. What can you do? What is the app you can create? I've spoken on this uh, in, in this hall when I asked uh, the, uh, the, the, the uh, I think it's called uh, the Nepalese, uh, uh, the, like we are, yeah, yeah. I said, you're sitting on water, the cleanest water, how come you don't have a brand which is global? That's one element. One app, create an app which doesn't exist. <coughs> or, or do something which exists, but just do it differently, do it cheaper, do it better, do a local Uber. The ideas are everywhere. What is stopping you? Keep the lights off, huh? I need some clicks. I got some choice clicks right here, yeah? Impressions, page views, followers. How about likes? You got some likes? I just need enough to get me through this quarter. Turn to the right. You are buying clicks. What will I tell the children? It's true. People still buy clicks. And they buy impressions. And they buy likes. I got 40 likes. Who cares? Is 40 good? Is 40 bad? 40 doesn't exist. Three people said like. The campaign is a success. 3,000 people said like. The campaign is a success. 3 million people. That's not a success. Firstly, people are very generous on Facebook. They like others. You have an omelette and they say like. <laughs> you know, I know what you had for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and I don't find that uh, inspirational. I mean, is that what you eat every day? <laughs> you know, a design plate with one little pea on it, who cares? But that's it, one like, but that's not the world of advertising. Advertising is a science first. What do you want? So, uh, I'm just going to, this is personal for you. It's, uh, keep, keep the lights off. It's inspiration to deliver your ambition, your roadmap. Just think about it. Many people here in the audience have 30 years left of work, 25, 20, 15, 10. Have you thought of what you're going to do? I know what I'm doing on the weekend. I know what I'm doing next week. But what about your career? That's going to be your turbine, which will give you the wealth to live another 50 years or 40 years, depending on how old you are. So this is inspiration for your ambition in the business in which you work. And just remember, it's not how good you are. It's how good you want to be. So for the young people, think about it. If I tell my son this, you know, he kind of, uh, what is the word, he, he, he changes his channel. You know, or he walks out of the room. But I can say it to you because you don't know me and I owe you nothing, you owe me nothing. But I'm saying it. You are very young. You must use this opportunity in a world which is yours. I must say also that my generation created this world for you. Steve Jobs and me are the same. <laughs> so, I mean, he's a friend. Was, will be when I go back. So think about that. It's you. And you remember Charlie Chaplin? How immortal is he? How immortal is he? He's being cloned even today. But how immortal is he? He had a clincher. What's your clincher? If you believe you take somebody to a restaurant and you order uh, a lobster, which is that restaurant is famous for, that could be your clincher to close the business deal. Because you know your client loves lobster door in a certain way with a bottle of nice red wine. That's a clincher. But in your life, in your goals, your personal career goals, what's your clincher? What are you building on? What do you want to do? So, I'm sounding like a parent, but I think this is the time, and uh, Ravan told me, he said at the end, I want you to give them some nuggets which will help them, which they can think about on Monday morning. And if you have a little bit of lethargy, you can think about it on Tuesday morning. Right? 
and if you are still not up to it, Wednesday morning. But at some point you need to think it through. People say you, you have to have a lot of passion for what you're doing, and it's totally true. And the reason is, uh, is because it's so hard that if you don't, any rational person would give up. It's really hard. And you have to do it over a sustained period of time. So if you don't love it, if you're not having fun doing it, you don't really love it, uh, you're going to give up. And that's what happens to most people, actually. If you really look at, 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 at the ones that uh, ended up you know, being successful, unquote, the eyes of society and the ones that didn't, oftentimes it, it's the ones that were successful loved what they did so they could persevere when, you know, when it got really tough. So that's uh, Steve Jobs, I'm sure you all know him. I mean, he founded the company, he exited the company, he came back to the company, and then unfortunately, he had cancer. cancer. All the money in the world would not save him. And if you read his last letter, right? That's some inspiration I'm giving you. You must search it. I'm not going to quote it. Read what he said when he was dying. He knew he was dying. All the money in the world couldn't save him. But what were his last regrets or thoughts when he was just about that? So I leave that with you. Now I'll just finish uh, off the presentation. So platforms are changing. Delivery is changing. You've got to differentiate. You've got to be relevant. And as I said, I'm trying to sum it up in a phrase. You need to identify. You need to target. You need to create. You need to press, you need to market, and you need to innovate. In each leg of that journey, you have things to do. And if you can do it from one day, your company will be a better place, your career will be in a better place, and your long term will be in a better place. So there's seven golden nuggets, which Ravan said I must summon because nobody will remember what you said. I said, okay. So what is context alignment? Think about it. Think about the context of where you are, the place, your company, your business, that full context, think about it. It has to be significant enough for you to want to do something. Brands need purpose and vision. If you don't put it onto yourself and to your brand and business, you won't know where you want to go. There is no shortcut to a strategic plan. Customer insights are available. You need to mine them. On the basis of a customer insight, you can build, you can put your company to obsolescence. Because if the feedback says you're not doing what you meant to, you're quickly going that direction. Innovation and relevance to your customer base is critical. Relevance, 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 or irrelevance. Pick, choose. Innovation, better, faster, quicker, cheaper. What are the things which you can build back? Media distribution for amplification and engagement. How are you going to take the money you have and where are you going to place it? How are you going to be sensible for your company? How are you going to use the science of what's available to buy for yourself the most efficient plan you could buy. And what is the constant? Technology will drive change. How will you ensure relevance and not obsolescence? And that's when he, you know, the good thing about Ravan, he allowed you to choose your leave behind point. And I thought of staying relevant. How are you going to be relevant today and relevant today? That's what I have to say. Alvin, thank you so much. We'll just stay back for two or three reasons. One, you've got 20 minutes overtime, so you'll have to pay us some money. Uh, secondly, I just want to announce the brand fest is over because uh, you said advertising is dead. So thank you for coming. Let's have a good lunch. No, uh, but thank you. Stay where you are. There's a momentum we have to give, right, Ravin? And uh, we want Mr. Buddhaditya Mukherjee, who was here somewhere, director Asian Paints, worth uh, $5 billion. 
uh, equity in Amazon and Uber, which is what you've said as well, is important. Uh, please come up. And it, uh, Raven, remind me again, it's called? This momento, you gave it a nice name. Kiss of the Night or something. Kiss of the Night. Uh, the lovely lady has got it. Not the kiss, just that. What comes with it? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. It's a picture of yourself if you're a narcissistic man. You can put it up in your bathroom. You can do You know, they say advertising. The most fun you can have with your clothes on is advertising. Till, you know, the world changed. Now, well, there's a lot of fun you can have with your... The digital website you and I looked on at the plane. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> lots of fun we had together. That's why I love so much to meet you today. Um, Thank you very much. Yeah, big hand, please. Jokes upon a big hand. Let me take advertising. It's great for the pictures, like I realized. People who are really important influencers generally are very easy going when you make fun of them. It's the ones who want to get upset. It's very really sad. Uh, Actually, well, if you put the other one, it has. Oh, uh, God. <laughs> Don't turn this into a pornographic fest. This is advertising, folks. All right, we're going to have a little big ad, please. Sorry, Jason. One more time. One more time.